bratty sister had an affair with my husband of two months, got pregnant, and then had the nerve to pack my bags and kick me out so she could live with him and my parents supported them. Just three months ago, I, F28, was married to the love of my life, Wes, M32, after being with him for four years. And today, I'm in the process of divorcing him, and my life and family have completely fallen apart. I have no support from my own family, and the only people I can rely on are my friends, thank God for them, or I'd be a bigger mess than I am now. I don't know why this happened, or what lesson I'm supposed to learn from it. All I know is this is unfair, and I don't know what I did to deserve being stuck in such a horrible situation. I have an older sister, Meg, F34. Meg and I have always had an okay relationship. There's a big age gap between us, so we never really had the chance to form that sisterly bond. I wasn't even a teenager when she left for college out of state. I wouldn't say we hated each other, well, now we do, but as kids, I don't think we hated each other at least I didn't hate her, but we also weren't the typical close best friend sister duo. There's no Elsa and Anna going on here. Our parents, too, never forced us to develop a bond. We did things as a family, but both she and I were allowed to be our own people, which was a good thing. Years later, when I went to college, things improved a little between us. I think since we were both adults, we could relate to each other better. I didn't go to the same university as her, and we weren't in the same state, but we still talked more than before, which is why this coming from her was the biggest shock of my life. When I was 24, I met Wes. He was an alumnus of my college and had come for a party. That's where we met, hit it off, and started dating soon after. By year two of our relationship, I had introduced him to my family. He popped the question a year ago, and we got married three months ago. I had the perfect life, I'm not going to lie. I had a fiancé who loved me, a good job in a field I chose for myself, and Wes was doing well, too. Everything was going great until three months ago. Meg, on the other hand, had a more difficult personal life. She got married when she was 25 to a man none of us liked. It was obvious he wasn't good for her, but no matter what we said, she wouldn't budge from her decision. So we let her be because that's all we could do. It wasn't a happy marriage by any means. He forced or rather manipulated her into leaving her job, which she did, making her financially dependent on him. My parents and I asked her many times if she was okay with it and told her we'd support her if she wanted to leave, but she always said no and asked us not to meddle. The breaking point for us, or rather me, came when she claimed I was hellbent on destroying her marriage because I had no one of my own this was five years ago, before I met Wes. I knew then there was no point in arguing with her or trying to make her see sense. She was behaving like a woman who was blind and loved by choice, and any help offered was seen as an affront. That was the last time I spoke to her about her a-hole of a husband, and we had very limited contact for close to two years after that. When I was 25 and she was 31, she finally got divorced. I never asked her the reason because I didn't want to meddle, not even a little. She tried to talk to me about it, but I always shut her down. Call me cruel or whatever, but I didn't have the energy or willingness to participate in it again. For years, I'd tried looking out for her, but in the end, I was blamed and shamed for it, and there was just no way I was engaging again. It pissed her off a lot, because I assumed she wanted support at that time, but I was out. This isn't to say I was downright cruel or mean to her. We patched up, sort of, and spent time together talking, hanging out, she'd moved to my state, and she even ranted about her issues to me, but I never gave any input. She was welcome to grieve and complain, but I wasn't going to open my mouth when it came to her ex-husband. She knew this, and it pissed her off, so much so that she sometimes tried to rile me up and get a reaction, but I knew better than to fall for it. Wes, for his part, could never understand the dynamic between me and my sister. He used to defend her and say that her judgment was clouded because of her husband, and that I shouldn't hold that against her. According to him, it's natural for people to behave this way when they're in love or when they've made a decision for themselves and it turns out to be wrong. No one likes to admit they screwed up, especially when others told them not to do something. I agree with him on this. No one likes being told, I told you so. But downright accusing someone of being a homewrecker is vile and disgusting, and I wasn't going to put up with it. And it's hilarious how she accused me of being a homewrecker when she's the one who had an affair with my husband. Anyway, so Wes and Meg had an okay relationship, in the sense that it was as okay as I allowed. I didn't engage with her much, so Wes's contact with her was limited as well. We met when we had time, and he always had a more sympathetic take towards her than I did. All through my relationship with him, I never suspected they were involved. Their interaction was limited, and I never imagined I would have to worry about something like this because Wes wasn't the kind of man to cheat. We got married three months ago, and everything was great. We had a great ceremony, 
Our families were happy, and everyone attended. It was wonderful, but we postponed the honeymoon because we wanted to go on the Disneyland cruise. We knew we wouldn't get leave for two big vacations. So, right after the wedding, we focused on decorating the house. I had moved in with him, the house is in his name, and things were good for the first couple of weeks. Well, I only got a couple of weeks with him because, about a month ago, my dear sister called me up crying, saying she needed to talk. I didn't have the energy for another one of her sob sessions, and I said the same to Wes, and for a change, he agreed with me. Little did I know what was coming. I told her I was busy, but she kept insisting it was urgent and we needed to meet. I invited her over, and Wes was there too. She looked uncomfortable, and Wes, in hindsight, seemed like he wanted to be anywhere but in that room. She told me she was pregnant, and then started crying. Before I could ask anything, she said Wes was the father. It took me a minute to process what she was saying. I looked at her and Wes who, to his credit, looked as shocked as I was and I started laughing. I thought it was some elaborate prank. But Wes wasn't laughing, and Meg was still crying. I turned to Wes, asking what was going on, and he muttered, you can't be pregnant. I asked what the hell he meant by that, and before he could answer, Meg interrupted and said they'd hooked up a month ago, and she was sure Wes was the father. I swear I couldn't think straight for a minute. I just stared at her like a deer in headlights, and when she didn't say anything else, I looked at Wes. He broke down crying, saying it was a one-time thing, that it meant nothing, and that he never thought she'd get pregnant. As if that was the issue. I told her to leave, and I told Wes to get out too. I couldn't look at them anymore and needed time to process what had happened. Meg looked at me like I was the one who had committed some unforgivable crime. She had the audacity to say that she should be the one staying in the house since she was pregnant, and I was not. It took every ounce of self-control not to slap her right there. I looked at Wes in disbelief, and he told her to leave, which she did. Wes left too, though I don't think they left together, but at this point, who knows? If he could get her pregnant, he sure could leave with her. I think I sat there for hours, unable to think. My mind was just numb. I don't know where the time went, and I had a few calls from Wes during that time, but I had turned off my phone because he was the last person I wanted to talk to. I couldn't believe he had betrayed me like this. This wasn't something I thought he was capable of. I couldn't even process the betrayal from Meg's end because I was still in shock over what my own husband had done. And then I saw a text from her. It essentially said that while she was sorry for what happened, it couldn't be changed. She was pregnant, she knew she was going to keep the baby, and it was in the best interest of the entire family for me to move out so she could move in with Wes, allowing him to take care of her and bond with the baby when it was born. I was appalled at her audacity. I couldn't believe she had the nerve to say this to me after sleeping with my husband. But I also knew I couldn't stay with Wes anymore. Despite my numbness, I knew that from the moment he confirmed it was his child. I couldn't stay with a cheater, and I definitely couldn't stay in such a screwed up family dynamic. I knew I had to leave. Whether or not she moved in was between Wes and her, but I knew I had to leave. I decided to call my mom and dad to tell them what had happened, but before I got the chance, my mom called me first. She told me Meg had spoken to her, and while it wasn't an ideal situation, I had to understand that this was Meg's last chance to be a mother. I asked mom if she was serious and if she understood the gravity of what Meg had done. Mom was quiet for a moment and said I was always welcome to come back home to her and dad, but Meg was 34, and she deserved to have a family after what happened with her ex-husband. I told mom there were hundreds of other men Meg could have had a family with, and she couldn't be defending her sleeping with my husband. Mom said she understood I was hurt, but I had to look at the bigger picture. She said maybe it was God's will because Meg got pregnant so easily, and if it was, I had to make way for his plan rather than focus on my own life. I cried for the first time after hearing this from mom. I couldn't believe she was supporting Meg over me when I was clearly the one who had been wronged. I disconnected the call. I knew there was nothing left for me. In the snap of a finger, my entire family had been taken from me. My husband, my sister, and my parents. I was all alone, and there was nothing I could do to change that. That's when I knew for sure I was moving out and going no contact with all of them. They could all eat crap. This was just too much for me to handle. It's still too much. It's only been about two months since I found out, and I hadn't thought they'd drag me into more drama, but here we are. I can't escape them, unfortunately. Anyway, that night, I texted Wes that I still didn't want to see him for a couple of days. He called me back immediately, but I didn't answer. He sent a barrage of texts, apologizing and saying he didn't know what had come over him but I wasn't in the mood to engage. I called my friend Sarah and briefly told her what was up and that I needed a place to stay until I could figure something out. She told me I could stay as long as I needed. 
She came over with some wine and pasta, and we ate while I cried and cried like I hadn't cried in years. She stayed with me for two whole days, thank God for good friends, and helped me pack my stuff. It was so much easier to deal with things having her around. There were moments when I went completely numb and couldn't get up, and she took charge and got things sorted. Once my stuff was packed and loaded in the car, I called Wes and told him he could come home now. It took him 20 minutes to arrive, and when he did, he couldn't look me in the eye. He said he was sorry and that he was glad I was giving him a chance to talk, and even though he had no justification, he still hoped I'd forgive him. I didn't say anything, just handed him the house keys and got in the car. By the time he realized what had happened, I was already gone with Sarah. I haven't had any contact with him since. He has sent texts, but I haven't responded. I filed for divorce immediately, and while he initially tried to fight it, he eventually stopped. I stayed with Sarah for about three weeks before finding a place of my own. It's a small studio, but it's more than enough for me. Wes is the only one who's still unblocked on my phone, and that's on my lawyer's advice. I've gone no contact with my parents and sister, and I prefer to keep it that way because I don't have the energy for their toxicity anymore. I thought they would get the hint and stay out of my life, but I guess that's not how it's supposed to be because now, I see Meg on my doorstep. I don't know how she got my address or what she wanted, but there she was, saying she needed to talk. I closed the door in her face because I didn't want to see her, let alone talk to her. But she didn't leave. She kept banging on my door, and I told her to go away, or I'd call the cops, but she didn't leave. She did stop knocking, but she didn't leave. I found that out the hard way. After about 20 minutes of silence, I assumed she was gone and decided to go out. I got into my car, but what I couldn't see was that she had followed me in her car. I stopped on the way to grab coffee, and she stopped me there. She said I had to talk to her, that I owed it to her. I yanked my arm away and told her I didn't know her anything, and she could get lost for all I cared. She said she understood I hated her at the moment, but as the ante to her baby, I had a duty and had already failed to discharge it. I had no idea what she was talking about, and I told her in no uncertain terms that I wasn't her kid's aunt. I'm no aunt to a child from my ex-husband, and I needed to be kept out of this mess. She said if I had warned her about Wes, she wouldn't be in this position, and I wouldn't have had to end my marriage. I didn't know what she was talking about, and I admit, at that point, I should have walked away, but curiosity got the better of me. I asked her what was wrong, and she broke down crying. She said she had no idea Wes would be such a terrible partner and that I had been living with someone like that for so long. She said he didn't help around the house at all. There was no emotional support from his side, and it felt like living with a zombie. She had hoped that as the pregnancy progressed, he would bond with the baby, if not with her, but she said it was worse than being with her ex-husband. He did nothing around the house no chores, no spending time with her, nothing. He had even told her she shouldn't expect him to be involved with the baby. He said he was willing to keep her and the kid in the house and would handle the finances, but the house and baby were her responsibility. She said she tried dishing it back by not preparing his meals or doing his laundry, but somehow, he managed his own chores and went to work, leaving her feeling helpless. She said if she had known he would be this way, she wouldn't have revealed who the father was and would have raised the kid on her own. But I had led her to believe that he was a wonderful partner, which is why she dropped the bomb, but now her life was worse than before. I told her I had no idea how she had the nerve to blame me after sleeping with my husband, but I wished her luck, and she could do whatever she wanted since I was out. She said I couldn't leave her like this, but I wasn't in the mood to listen anymore, so I left the cafe. Now, I'm sitting in my car typing this out because I don't know what to do, how to feel, or who to talk to. This is such a big mess, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to make my way out of this. I just hope she doesn't contact me again, and I hope Wes doesn't find out she met me. I'm worried if he does, he'll start texting and calling me again, and I don't have the energy to deal with that anymore. Edit, I went through all the comments, and they've opened my eyes to what really happened. I was too stunned to process Meg's reaction, but now I realize she may have purposely baby-trapped Wes because she thought he was a good partner, especially after her horrible experience with her ex-husband. I'm not excusing Wes he hurt me beyond repair but the more I think about it, the more likely it seems. Her entire tirade earlier was about how she felt cheated because Wes wasn't the partner I propped him up to be. But why should that bother her? Why would she say that if I'd told her the truth, things would be the same? It's disgusting and appalling how vile she can be. I can't believe I second-guessed myself after what she said. And the confusing part is that Wes has never been the way she described him. He's always been so hands-on, and her description seems like a lie. I've never known him to be a slacker, and this behavior baffles me completely. I don't know why he's doing this, and I don't want to know either. I'm still struggling with the betrayal, 
and it's been very hard to adjust to this new normal. I don't want more drama at their expense. They can have the mess they've created. I'm out. Update 1, I wasn't out of this. No matter how hard I try, I keep getting pulled back into their chaos. I had no intention of telling Wes about my meeting with Meg, and I had no desire to contact her again. I had left them to their own devices, but Wes showed up at my house. I don't know how they know where I live. I know Sarah hasn't told them, and I haven't had anyone over who would snitch. Maybe they're stalking me from work, or Wes still has access to my location, though I know that's not possible. Anyway, when I opened the door, it looked like I was meeting a ghost. He was a shell of himself. His cheeks were sunken, and he had dark circles as big as craters. If I didn't absolutely hate him, I might have rushed over and hugged him. That was my reflex, if I'm being honest, but I had to control myself. He said he needed to talk to me one last time and wouldn't bother me again. I let him in, and he spoke for about half an hour. He apologized over and over, saying he was disgusted with himself. He told me that Meg came over one day while I was at work, looking for me, and when he told her I wasn't there, she broke down crying. She started off by saying she regretted not having a closer relationship with me and would do anything to fix that. Wes said she asked for his help in making this happen. She was crying a lot, and he said he was consoling her, and one thing led to another. I couldn't control my anger when he said that. I told him there was no justification for what he'd done, and he said he knew he had screwed up and had no excuse. He said he just wanted me to know what had happened. He swore that was the only time anything like that had happened, and he had wanted to tell me immediately, but Meg begged him not to. Even when she told us she was pregnant, he said he was against her keeping it and had asked her to abort it, but she was adamant about keeping the baby. Wes said if I gave him one more chance, he would cut off all contact with her and the baby and start fresh with me. He said he had been acting like a terrible partner on purpose to show Meg they would never be a family, no matter what she tried to pretend. He told me my parents and Meg were manipulating him into accepting the situation, but he knew it was wrong. I asked if he was going to marry Meg, and he said he was in the process of kicking her out. He had tried backhanded tactics, but they hadn't worked, so now he had to face it head-on and kick her out himself. He still held out hope I'd forgive him, and he said he'd chosen to wait for me. I told him there was almost no chance I'd ever go back to him because I couldn't get over the betrayal. I said nothing could be worse than him sleeping with my own sister. I told him he had the luxury of ignoring what happened and moving on, but I was stuck with his family for life. There was already too much unavoidable involvement on my part, and I didn't want to complicate things further. He begged me to reconsider, but I stayed firm. I told him I was going to proceed with the divorce, no matter what, and there was no point dragging it out. He looked heartbroken, and it was just so sad. Despite everything, I still love the guy. That's the worst part. I love him so much, but I can never overlook what he's done. That's the tragedy of it all. Update 2, for those waiting for a dramatic update, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I've gone completely low contact with Wes, and the divorce will be finalized in a couple of weeks. He's kicked Meg out, and she somehow found a way to blame me for it, but honestly, at this point, I don't even care. My parents tried getting in touch with me to argue Meg's case to Wes. I don't know what kind of stuff they're on to even suggest something like that, but I didn't respond. There's no point talking to people so indifferent to other people's pain that they don't even know what to say. Other than that, life is normal. I mean, as normal as it can be in these circumstances. There are still days when I break down uncontrollably, but overall, I'm doing better. I have my friends, I have my job, and I keep myself busy, and I don't think I should expect any more from myself so soon. I genuinely feel the worst is over, and I know I'll be going no contact with the baby too. I know it's not the baby's fault, but it's best for me to stay as far away from this mess as possible.